Hello there. Close your eyes for me. Close them. Now, think back years ago to the first time you played Minecraft. The first block you placed. The first house you built. And the first dog you tamed. Feel that sadness, yet happiness. Feel that sinking in your stomach, yet elevation in your heart. That, my friend, is nostalgia. What if I could mix 100 days with nostalgia? And that is today's goal. In today's video, I'm going to be surviving 100 days in Minecraft Superflat. Not Java Superflat, not Bedrock Superflat, but Xbox One Edition Superflat, which stopped receiving updates seven years ago, trapping it in time permanently as a nostalgia trip. Beating this game is not going to be a walk in the park, with the constant slime pestilence, limited resources, and the altered nether I know you don't remember. So can I do it? Can I survive 100 days and kill the ender dragon? Buckle up, and let's get to it. Of course, before beginning these 100 days, I need to create the world. We're going to name this world... Blunter. So I selected all of the available super flat options, and created the world. Okay, three, two, one! Okay, fine. That no, wasn't as cool as I thought it would be. And so here we are. Day number one. As you may be able to spot, everything is on fire. The lava lake option and the grassy plains results in constant fire. But no need to worry, for I am faster than the fire and uh, it's kind of hard to miss. Avoiding the fire, I made my way to a village. For some reason, I didn't expect this. But the village was also on fire. <laughs> village! Ignoring the absolute tragedy that is happening around me, I rob these villagers of all their possessions and then leave. Not before cleansing them of the incorrect. <laughs> Evidently, I didn't care. Because I did it again. This village was also on fire, but this time, it had blacksmiths. Ah oh, yes, a blacksmith! These blacksmiths left me with a total of all four iron ingots. That's enough for a bucket. This new bucket I have crafted can be used to save the villagers from the firm clutches of the flame. Look at that. Beautiful. Fear not, villagers, for I am here to put out your fires and kill your weak. I started off by extinguishing the lava sources, and then I, um... I, uh, I didn't do anything after that. <laughs> that was so depressing. Oh my god, look at that. There's extra iron in my inventory. I'm clearly cheating. Oh my god. That's insane. After saving the innocent from a fiery demise, I decided to get a good night's sleep and end day one. Let me sleep! The morning of day two, I came down the ladder and whoa! Who the f are you? So I did my civic duty which someone did not approve of. What? With the flesh of his fallen brothers, really? I crafted a sword and an axe. That must have hit home for him because even slashing at him, he didn't fight back. That's easy enough. enough. The other one did not feel the same way. Although I have saved the villagers, purged them of all their weaknesses, I realized they didn't have a blacksmith and lost all feelings immediately. In this new village, I found sand. You have no idea how rare that is. Oh, blacksmith. Okay, this is the one. This is it. I started off by putting out all the lava sources once again, making this village a safer place. Day two, I stayed up too late killing the weak and monsters started to spawn. We lost a few good men this night. Oh my God. It's a sad sleep today. Morning of day three, I decided to start on a cobblestone generator using the only blocks I have that are fireproof, which is which is here it was the ugliest thing I have ever built. Yes, I've done it. <laughs> which I mined cobblestone from 
until the night of day three, in which I slept. Because I am a bitch. I had also found a large portion of the population that was slaughtered by zombies. And even got my blacksmith, the motherfucker. It's uh, that wall constructing, I think. This poor excuse of a wall was all I was able to do with the limited cobblestone I had. So of course, I got back to mining. With the limited cobblestone I had, I made this. Impressive, I know. Wall construction began early on day five, and I gotta say it's looking pretty good. And here it was, a completed wall on the dusk of day six, where I began the lawnmower project. You see, this long grass really is a hazard. Mobs can hide in it, especially creepers and slimes due to them being green. So it had to go. And on day seven, I became the lawnmower. By the end of day 7, I had made great progress towards flattening the land. You see, this is not just about vanity, although it is slightly, but this flat land now allows me to light it much easier. On the morning of day 8, I got to the top of my tower and I looked over my land. Oh, it's looking flat. I love it. I needed to get some food going, so I finalized Project Lawnmower and started farming. Oh yeah, tell me that map isn't nostalgic. I looked in my chest and realized the one thing I was lacking. Ah, uh, wood. Using the daylight I had left, I collected wood from nearby trees and the surrounding estate. You see, I've been hiding something from you. This entire time, I have been cooking charcoal. Where day nine went, I don't know. But on the night of day nine, I began lighting my kingdom. I'm doing this because everything the light touches is my kingdom. The only real things of event we're lighting, saving my villagers, and this spider checking my vibe. Realizing I was chill, we had a crisp dab, and I moved on. Once I had checked the corners of my land and realized the lighting was sufficient, I went to sleep. Morning of day 10, I looked over my land, and I gotta say, looking pretty prosperous over here. But I gotta say, these village houses, they're nostalgic, but they're just so ugly. They have to go. This task was so long, however, that it even crept into the night of day 10. But man, that wall's really coming into play. I'm just saying. After being brutally attacked by many mobs, I finally caved in and went to sleep. Oh, j oh, I just, with those houses gone, the village just looks so clean. I love it! And so began the first construction inside the walls. An animal farm. Well, that was easy. Right in early day 12, I decided to take the next step in my journey. A villager trading hall. You see, villagers in 2017 are much different to the villagers now. If you don't like a new villager's trades, all you have to do is break the workstation, place it back, and he has new trades. But these villagers suck. If you don't like a villager's trades, too bad. Those are his trades. Permanently. And to top it all off, I, uh... Can't breathe them to make more. Making the villager population limited. And that is why we need them safe. But of course, I don't like to make anything easy on myself and I went for a really complicated design. To my credit, I didn't want anything looking bland and I wanted it to look nice, but... I hadn't even completed the frame and I was out of wood. This was a giant mistake. Morning of day 13, I came down and there was a shepherd in my house. Ah, oh my God, shepherd. Shepherds in my house. This was perfect. I wanted my main source of emeralds to come from wool because it's renewable and very easy to get. So naturally, I put them in a hole day, and got back to construction. After spending day 13 constructing and getting wood, I felt like I hadn't made much progress and I was beginning to lose motivation. But on the morning of day 14, seeing how it was turning out, I was re-motivated and I got back to work. The waffle was getting out of hand. Gonna repeat the go away. Go, go join your brothers. Okay. Uh that's not it, is it? No, 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 of course. Did he do that for the center as well? Does he do that? Cross the center. Does he do that? Do I have to do that? I really hope I don't have to do that. He does! He fucking does! <laughs> I have to repeat it everywhere. Alright. Literally wanna build up a dirt hut. I'm gonna build these villages a dirt hut. <laughs>
Wait, is it all the way around or is it just around the front and sides? No, 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 it's definitely around the back. It is definitely... <laughs> oh my, this is, this is just eating into days. Oh my lord. Seeing my haul from up high really let me appreciate the progress I've made. Okay, it's kind of paying off. Look how cool that thing looks. I love it. It kept me motivated into day 15. Did not stop me from complaining. Never done. Never, never. Um, is that no? <laughs> I always think is that done? And then, guess what? If you think it's done, it's not done. Five more times until I'm fucking done. After a quick gathering of materials, I got back to it. <laughs> not before getting mad at my Alexa, of course. Alexa, play Southern Nights. Alexa, play Southern Nights. This bitch is ignoring me. Alexa, play Southern Nights, please. Alexa. Play Southern Nights. Alexa! Please play Southern... Thank you. At the end of day 15, I had completed the walls. Are we done? I think, I think with my brainius, I'm done. Yes! And of course, a fuggly door. <laughs> we got that cheese door. I mined all of day 16. Some YouTubers will make you watch it, but I won't. Because I'm nice like that. On day 17, I procrastinated actually building the villager trading hall and decided to breed some pigs. But after realizing I have limited days, I got straight back to it for the rest of day 17. Days 18, 19, and 20 were all spent roofing this hall. And finally, it was complete. That took fucking ages. I finished it up by placing where the villagers will go. The only thing left to do was bring in the villagers. And so began the single most infuriating experience of my life getting him into the building was not a problem what came after was the problem i spent upwards of 45 minutes trying to get this little prick into a hole just for it to end like this this man would not budge so i resorted to punching which seemed to be working i got so close until I need that. He's fu- He's fu- And on day 21, it didn't get better. I went looking to see if there were any other shepherds in the village, and... That's right. I leapt at a creeper. With all my might, I leapt towards that green bastard like I wanted a fucking hug. And on day 21, marks the first death of these 100 days. Because Xbox One Edition does not have hardcore mode, I was able to respawn. But that did not stop me from being absolutely livid. In the end, I reluctantly settled for a farmer. Oh! My mental state was not at its best. These villagers were on thin ice. The mild inconvenience could have led me to erase them from existence. This one wasn't as bad, as I only had to spend 25 minutes putting this guy in. Ah, get fucked. I traded my first carrots, and here it was. My first emeralds. That villager process did eat into the night, but now I went to sleep on its day 22. This was also the day I discovered that sprinting and attacking acts as knockback. Day 22 was the day that I also got another farmer villager in the hall. He must have heard what happened to the first one, because he went in with these. It was so much easier. Oh my days. Day 22 was a productive day, as towards the end I made a carrot farm that I have plans to make huge. But it was getting dark, so I went to bed and woke up ready on day 23. The carrot farm was completed day 23 and I sold the excess carrots for some stonks. Day 23 was also the day I tamed my first horse and gave him gold horse armor. I don't know why, I didn't like him. Day 24 I went out looking for villagers possessions I could turn into my property. As I was looting this village I came across an armorer who I trapped in this hole to contain for safekeeping. 
looted the blacksmith of two diamonds and six obsidian, which is enough to make an enchantment table, which is exactly what I need to beat the dragon. Oh my god! That's all the diamonds I need. But now the village was run dry and I moved on. Although the loot from the next village was absolute doo-doo. Uh, absolute garbage, but we'll take it. On the last village of day 24, amongst burning villages and zombie groans, I found the second villager I needed. A weaponsmith. So I trapped him in a hole, and since I didn't have a bed, I waited out the night. Due to my lack of sleep, I was able to watch the sunrise on day 25. Early day 25, I set back off to my compound and I picked up some pumpkins along the way. I traded carrots for emeralds before creating a tree farm and clearing some space to begin construction on a nether portal. Day 25 was a productive day. Day 26, I know not all of my carrots have grown, but I was just so eager, so I harvested all of my carrots. And after an entire session of reaping and replanting, I was left with three stacks of carrots. After some excavating, I expanded my carrot farm to increase stonk potential. And here we have it, carrot farm version 2. By the end of day 26, I had three farmers in the village trading hall. Day 27 was the day the construction began for the interdimensional portal. Due to my lack of diamond pickaxe, I had to resort to the lava and water method, which I uh, had no idea how to do. It took me two days, but I had done it. On day 29, the frame for the nether portal was complete. Now you may be thinking, Snapcrock, there's no gravel in Superflat. How do you plan on making flint and steel? That, my friend, is an excellent question. You see, to light another portal, you do not need a flint and steel. You need fire. And if you've been paying attention for the last 29 days, you should have noticed there is a lot of fire. Now our only problem is being able to harness said fire. And that is where this contraption comes in. Lava and wood placed in this fashion will force the wood to catch a light, sparking the nether portal. Sounds easy, right? Little did I know this would take fucking ages. And on the morning of day 30, it was lit. Ooh. We can go into the nether. This is where things begin to get interesting. I gathered my tools and my cobblestone, and I stepped into the portal. Like the overworld, the nether was an endless flat expanse. No structures, no hills, only netherrack for as far as I could see. This left me open to absolutely everything. Realizing my fate, I frantically tried to construct cover and put out fires. This was a fruitless effort. At a minimum of three ghasts at a time, they were creating fire faster than I could put it out. After long efforts of spoingling around, I eventually conceded and returned home. In defeat, I wandered my land and came up with a plan. Do you want to know my plan? Cobblestone. You see, cobblestone is ghast proof, making it the perfect house material. There is only one problem. I have to construct it faster than they kill me. This would be challenging due to there already being many craters and lots and lots of fire. At first, the construction was going well until the unthinkable happened. This was not part of the plan. That's right, a ghast has destroyed my nether portal. And due to me not having a flint and steel, I'm fu instead of crying like a baby, I bare grills to this shit and thought of a solution. For now, I had created a relatively safe environment. This allowed me to brainstorm on ways to get out of my predicament. And then, it hit me. I don't need to wield fire when I have giant tentacle men throwing it at me. So, all I needed to do was anger them. After many minutes of getting ghasts to throw fireballs at my portal, this method did not work. And then I noticed the four planks of wood sitting in my inventory. This was it. This was how I was going to get out. All I needed was for the wood to catch fire. After lots of thought, I decided, fuck it. I'm putting all my planks down as a hope to get the portal lit as quickly as possible. I even placed netherrack in front of the portal, hoping if it catches a light, it will burn forever. And then all I had to do was wait. After many few minutes, and a magma cube betrayal, this happened. 
I had done it. The portal has been relit as quickly and as sneakily as I could. I jumped back through, and I had never been more happy to see the night sky. Day 31, I wanted nothing to do with the nether, so I took my mind off it by mining some cobblestone. And of course, I had a random spout of courage that made me want to go back into the nether. And of course, it happened again. So I mined some cobblestone, finished my nether shack, and watched the sunset on day 31. Day 32, I mined half a stack of cobblestone to begin our next project. Now, this is more of a wither skeleton killing chamber than a wither skeleton farm, but this construction will help us get something much more valuable. Blaze rods. Curious? Let me ease that curiosity. Days 31 to 33 were spent constructing this. I see you, I know what you're thinking. Snapcroc. What the f is this? Well, I'll tell you, my foul-mouthed friend. You see that little patch of nether brick? That is a makeshift nether fortress. In order to build this, all I needed to do was locate where wither skeletons were spawning, which was pretty easy, because as I came up on my tunnel, there was one right there. Then all I had to do was build a safe environment where I would not get absolutely bombarded by ghasts. And then I would place nether brick on the floor. You see, if I show you a clip of a blaze spawning, what's that beneath its rods? What did it spawn on? That's right, nether brick. My hopes was to cover this entire floor with nether brick in hopes that it would become a blaze spawner. Will it work? You'll just have to wait and see, won't you? By the time I left the nether, day 34 was over. So I slept and it was then day 35. Day 35, I went back to the nether ready to finally use my machine and fight some wither skeletons. Little did I know. Oh. That's correct. My mm -hmm. spawner has worked. With new joys knowing I can fully beat the game, uh. I farmed carrots. All of the carrots. Which took up oh. all of day 35. I won't bore you with the details, but days 36 to 43 were all spent expanding the cage, placing more nether brick, and killing blazes. Day 44 though, I decided to take a break and chop down some houses. Days 46 to 49 were also spent doing the exact same thing. But then, on day 50, the game crashed. I didn't lose any progress. It was just weird. And then, on day 51, I had obtained all required blaze rods. Judgment Day was soon upon me. Day 52 began the construction of a mob farm, but first, I had to excavate. Day 53 and I had already made great progress on my mob farm. Yes, I made the shaft out of wood, so I could say, my wood is massive. Day 54 was complete, but I had run out of materials, so day 55 I got more. By the end of day 55, all I had left to build was the roof and some trapdoors. This was going really well. Day 56, and here it was, the completed mob farm. Oh my lord. Oh shit. Oh shit. I need to turn this off. Oh my days. Why isn't he burning daylight? Got an iron sword. He's a menace. There we go. This works so well. Oh my lord. This mob farm is super efficient because in super flat there are no caves. This is the only dark spot, making the spawns incredibly fast. At the end of day 56, I farmed into the night. It's a peaceful activity. You should try it. Day 57, I traded with some villagers and set off in search of new hires for Snapcroc Industries. Yes, yes, you're hired, you start now! I now had all the villagers I needed to beat the dragon. So I went back and grabbed some emeralds. There you go. Night was upon me on day 57. So I collected the donations from the local sheep of wool. And I made a bed. It was day 58. Burn! Oh my god, look at that. Diamond tools, baby. Diamond tools! And a diamond pick. Ow. And there it was. I had officially turned carrots into diamond tools. As soon as I got home, I tested my diamond sword on my undead livestock. 
Oh yeah, baby. Now that is efficiency. More destruction, day 58. Day 59, I began a potato farm. As it's another way I can get stonks. My stonk potential is skyrocketing. I feel super safe wandering my compound at night now. Just due to the fact that my mob farm takes up most of the mob cap. I feel pretty safe in my compound actually. Because I think most of the mobs are in there. I don't really have a use for these pigs. It's just nice to have a lot of pigs, I gotta be honest. Day 60 was also the day I found a depressed villager. It's okay, man. Sometimes I want to be a potato too. I spent all of day 61 farming and trading with villagers. Gotta get ready for that dragon fight. Day 62, I went to go see that armorer villager to get my first piece of diamond armor. But this villager would only sell me a diamond chest plate. And so began the long search for a completed armor. Little did I know, this was a huge waste of time. This search stretched into day 63, where I hit this epic horse clutch. And so I named him Clutch. Just kidding, I don't like him, he is slow. I RTB'd late day 63. A few nerds out there, that means return to base. Because I needed to stash some of my items. My inventory was looking really ugly. After some quick bartering, I went back out into the wild looking for that armorer. I had failed. I couldn't find an armorer. I sleep in the fields tonight. The fields of shame. Day 64 and I collected some books from bookshelves. My iron armor is poo and it needs to be better. It was day 64 that the horse I didn't care about died. I didn't see it happen, but I found the saddle. I wasn't that bothered. I was really more bothered about the golden horse armor that I lost. It's okay. I used the saddle from my old horse and put it on a new one. And look at the speed I am! Now this... This is a stallion! He kinda looked like a cow, so I named him immediately. His name is Frank. And if you don't like it, tell me. Tell me how much you don't like the name Frank. No, no. I'm not talking to anybody else. I'm talking to you. Yes, you. So go ahead. Tell me how much you don't like it. Write your comment. Oh please, I insist. Today was also the day that I looked up Xbox One Edition Villager Trades and found out that all armorers will only trade a diamond chest plate. It was a dark time. Day 65 and I went back home. Created an enchantment table, went to the armorer village, traded with some clerics, got some lapis lazuli and began enchanting. This did not take long at all for me to get protection for everything. I also used that same cleric to trade me ender pearls and I crafted it six eyes of ender. Day 65 I used one of my eyes of ender to locate the end portal. I didn't plan on going through it yet I just wanted to get a good look of it. And oh it's intimidating. Day 67 I built a pond. That's all I did. You'll see why. Day 68. Everything was prepped. And I fished late into the night. Because tomorrow, I am fighting the dragon. That's right. I am fighting the dragon on the funny number. If you don't know why 69 is a funny number, ask your mother. That's what I taught her last weekend. Here it is. Day funny number. I had everything prepped and ready. I had a great bow, great sword, lots of placing blocks two buckets of water, and of course, the eyes to enter the end. Everything we have been doing has been amounting to this one moment. My heart was pounding. Oh my fucking god, this is so intense. I'm so nervous, but I place the eyes. And jumped in. Here it was. This was in fact the first time I have ever fought the dragon in Xbox One Edition. This was absolutely nerve-wracking. But I did have a strategy, and that was water everywhere. I had my plan, I had my sword. Let the final boss of Minecraft begin.
make these little perches here, then I can jump up on them. Just gotta keep an eye on it. Like that. appropriate I kill her with a carrot yes I've done it yes oh my god I had done it I had killed the ender dragon on nostalgic super flat and it only took me 69 days look at that oh uh, so before I left the end I of course went to the end cities Clearing these little cities was actually rather easy. But here is what I came for. The Elytra. Finally, I can fly. And of course, I did not forget the dragon head, which many people do. But I don't, because I'm smart. But also the loot in these chests is insane. Maybe I have to bring the dragon back just so I can loot the other end cities. After looting the end cities, I was left with an abundance of amazing loot. Full diamond armor with some of the best enchantments and so many tools with almost max enchantments. And mending! <laughs> mending! Back in the overworld on the night of day 69. I slept cozy tonight knowing I have won. I stand proud day 70 next to the dragon head with the dragon egg on top in full diamond armor with an elytra on my back. I felt like a king! Day 71, I didn't know what to do. I was lost. I had completed the game. But then I realized I have been living in this village house and realized that needs to change. But first I need to remove the surrounding estate. That took up all of day 71 and day 72 I started laying down the foundation. This house is not going to be small. I even had to expand the wall. That's how big this house is going to be. There we have it. End of day 72. That's okay, what we've got of the, the new house. Day 73, and look, I have a floor now. It's beautiful. Then for the rest of day 73, I collected materials. After a lot of experimenting and giving up on said experiments, this is what I had by the end of day 76. Day 80, this is what we have so far, and I started construction on the side tower. I really wanted a lookout station to look over my land. But it didn't really turn out that way. Day 81, I began roofing this masterpiece. And I've got to be honest, this roof is looking pretty snazzy. Day 85, look how well this roof is coming together. The only problem, it is very, very dark. Here it is on day 86, a completed roof and a room at the top of my tower. This house is really coming together. I felt like watching the sunrise on day 87. I don't know why. You can't stop me. What are you going to do about it? Late into the night of day 87, I decided to improve the room at the top of the tower. I messed about with different roof ideas and ended up with this. Look at it, so pointy! Day 90, I finished up the barn on the side of the house and started working on entrances. If I can't get into my house, it doesn't have much use. I also got really close to dying. It must be because my head hitbox is absolutely massive. Day 91, oh, we're in the last 10 days, it's getting close. I began putting some floors in and I even put a window in. I used my silk touch pickaxe that I got from the end to mine some windows. And there we have it, window. Yeah, see, if you look at it from this angle, it looks like a completed house. Well, I can't get to my floors if I don't have a staircase. So a staircase is what I built late, day 92. Day 94 was me messing around with the idea of having a spiral staircase. I wanted one, but didn't know where to put it. Here. Will do just fine. Also to give my roof a bit of texture, I added these windows in. I think they're going to make a great addition. By day 95, I had completed the first and third floor. All that was left to do was the second. Day 96 consisted of placing windows, lighting areas, and building the second floor. I even added an archway in between rooms. I think it gives the house a little more character. Day 96, I finished the second floor, waited till night time, and took a look at the house. It is beautiful and complete. 
I even took some screenshots of myself with the massive head in front of the house. I think it looks pretty good. Day 97, I'm putting Frank in the pen that was on the side of my house. But, Frank? 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 Where's Frank? After searching all over my compound and in the nether, I, I believed he was dead. And then my dumb ass remembered. Shit, he's at the end portal. So I run over to the end portal, remembering the coordinates. I picked up Frank, and we ran back home. We got home safe. I slept through the night, and on day 98, I put Frank in his pen, and named the pen Frank's Pen. I've really enjoyed these 100 days, and I'd love to take it further. So if you want to see me do 200 days on this Minecraft world, show this video some love and support, because the love and support this video gets will show me that 200 days is worth doing. Not to mention that this super flat preset is one of 17, such as Desert, Tiger, and the Nether. And I'd love to try them out. So leave a comment down below which one you'd rather. 200 days or a different preset. I wanted to show that I had come a long way, so I started using my minerals to make trophies, such as gold on top of my nether portal, and I wanted to put my dragon egg in the trophy room. The dragon egg and the dragon head lay next to the bow I used to slay the ender dragon. The night of day 99, I fished. I thought it was poetic. I fished before killing the dragon, I fished after killing the ender dragon, and I fished the day before the 100 days was up. Then I pillared to space. I wanted to watch the sun rise from the atmosphere. And so the sun rose on day 100. We've really come a long way in these 100 days. I certainly have a lot more than I thought I would. I wasn't even sure if I could get to the end, let alone diamond armor. So what we've achieved is definitely an achievement. But we aren't finished. There's still lots more I'd like to do with my compound. And there's still lots more to do in the game. But remember, the power of 200 days is in your hands. The lovely thing about this challenge is that you can try it for yourself. If you still have that old copy of Minecraft Xbox One Edition, you can load this up and do exactly what I did. I would love to see all of your 100 days experiences. For now, this is goodbye, and I will see you all in the next video. One, two, three, into the